Hello everybody, it's Fu here, and today I want to talk about overlooked abilities, and one in particular that I think is probably the most overlooked ability of them all. Something that could be absolutely busted, that could get Pokemon banned, but that just isn't used at all and no one really talks about. And I can confirm this because over on Twitter I asked people what they thought was the most overlooked ability and I got some great suggestions. All the abilities that were mentioned are very good and probably not as appreciated as they should be, but no one mentioned Stakeout, the topic of this video. This ability could be so broken in the wrong hands and I am going to try to convince you of that in this video. I'll talk about why it's so strong, why people are sleeping on it currently, what the conditions would be for it to be this broken amazing ability that everyone would know about, and also some tips about how you can use Stakeout right now if you want to, despite it not being in the best position and not having the full potential unlocked yet. So first off, what is Stakeout? Well this ability gives you a damage boost if the opponent switches out on that turn. It's a pretty awkward condition with the opponent having to switch out because obviously you're not in control of that, but the damage boost is well worth it because it is a two times damage boost. That's as strong as the huge power boost for physical Pokemon and everyone knows how strong huge power is. Like that ability is not slept on at all, but no one talks about Stakeout. What's also worth noting is that huge power is only for physical attack, whereas Stakeout doubles your damage regardless of whether it's physical or special. So this can work for physical or special attackers. It's actually a lot more versatile, which is really nice. But as I said, that condition of having the opponent have to switch out to get the boost is a bit tricky. You just have to use it in the right way. And this is all about positioning. What you need to do is get your stakeout Pokemon in where it has a type advantage or where the opponent's already taken some damage. So you're threatening a KO on the current Pokemon. That means you can either attack and KO that Pokemon or your opponent has to switch out to preserve that Pokemon. But whatever comes in will take a massive hit and may not be able to survive that hit or the follow up that will come the next turn. It puts your opponents in really tough positions and it's basically a checkmate ability because your opponent will have to sacrifice one of their Pokemon. So for that reason, this is the ultimate revenge KO ability. If you've got something that can threaten the KO against your opponent, if they switch out, you'll still get a KO, which is absolutely amazing. So why is no one currently using it? Why does everyone sleep on it? Well, to this date, only two Pokemon families have had access to it. Firstly, in Generation 7, Sun and Moon, Gumshoes and Young Goose had access to Stakeout. The issue is that Gumshoes, though being pretty strong, it had base 110 attack, with which it could deal out quite a lot of damage, and it had decent coverage too, it was really slow and it was pretty frail. It had low defense stats, it had very low speed stats. So while you could try to set up these situations when you threaten the Pokemon in front of you and your opponent has to make that decision on whether they switch or not, because Gumshoes is so slow, it would probably still have to take an incoming attack and it just wasn't bulky enough to take many of those. So it wasn't a consistent enough strategy. I did like that Gumshoes had this unique thing going for it, but it definitely didn't live up to the potential of the revenge KO -er that we need for Stakeout to be amazing. Unfortunately, after Generation 7, Gumshoes was impeached by Dexit, but fortunately, Stakeout still remained in Sword and Shield because Thievul and Nickit were introduced and they had Stakeout as their hidden ability. Now, Thievul has some advantages over Gumshoes as a user of Stakeout because it is considerably faster. It's based 90 speed, which is decent, but it's still not amazing for a revenge KO. -er. You really want very, very fast Pokemon to use this in the best capacity. But the biggest problem for Thievul was that it was weak. While Gumshoes was a physical attacker, Thievul is a special attacker, but it only has base 87 special attack, which is really not great at all. You're not gonna be doing too much damage. So you have to kind of run modest nature and choice specs to boost the damage as much as possible. And even then, there are Pokemon that can take attacks from Thievul. The most obvious examples of those are fairy types because they can resist its only stab typing in dark and they generally have very high special defense stats anyway, so they can take even stakeout boosted attacks from Thievul. So this is where Thievul stumbles. While it is faster, 
it can't dish out the damage that it needs to do. And I guess that could be expected for both Gumshoes and Thievul being early root Pokemon. Except we've got Corviknight, we've got a huge power Diggersby, and we've got Gen 6 Gale Wings Talonflame, which were all early root Pokemon. So that's kind of not an excuse, guys. Get your act together, Gumshoes and Thievul. What are you doing? So yeah, the potential for stakeout hasn't been met yet. Only these Pokemon have access to it. What would the ideal user of Stakeout look like? Well, they need to be fast and they need to be strong, maybe have good coverage moves as well so that you can really predict if your opponent's gonna switch, you can get them with the right coverage move and just knock out whatever's coming in with that Stakeout boost. The first example I want to talk about is Dragapult. This thing is a menace, especially in Smogon OU. It's blisteringly fast. Base 142 speed is amazing. It outspeeds pretty much the entire tier. And while its attack stat is higher than its special attack, it has high base power special moves and a really good special move pool. So generally it's a special attacker with a very spammable shadow ball. It generally holds the choice specs as well. Currently its most used ability in OU is Infiltrator, but this is kind of situational because it's only useful if your opponent has Reflect or Light Screen or Substitute which isn't always the case. So replacing that with Stakeout, you actually don't lose too much for the amazing ability to absolutely destroy switch-ins. And I think that this ability would be so good for Dragapult that it could well get it banned. Just as an example, Clefable is one of the best switch-ins to Dragapult currently. Currently, if a mixed defensive Clefable switches in on a Dragapult, it takes about 38% of its health, which it can easily recover off. It's got the leftovers and it can threaten Dragapult out with its fairy coverage. So really not a great position for Dragapult. However, if Dragapult had stake out, that Clefable would switch in and take 77% of its HP from a neutral Shadow Ball. And it would definitely get KO'd the following turn with a follow-up Shadow Ball. That means that one of Dragapult's most consistent switch-ins would not be able to switch into it. This is absolutely game-changing and Dragapult I do think will be banned if it had the stakeout ability. Another example of how strong this ability could be would be with Weavile, which has pretty poor abilities currently, both of which require it to get hit by attacks for them to work and Weavile is very frail. So losing its current abilities is not a problem at all. Weavile is very fast, not quite as fast as Dragapult, but still very fast and is very strong with really, really strong attacking typings. And to put into perspective how strong Weavile would be, if Toxapex switched into a Choice Banded Weavile's knockoff and it had to take some Stealth Rock damage, Weavile would have a 94% chance to one hit KO a Toxapex. That kind of power is just stupid. And again, I think Weavile may well get banned if it had this stakeout ability. So hopefully I've kind of convinced you that this ability would be broken in the wrong hands. And currently it's definitely not in those hands. It's in the weakest hands that you could possibly imagine. But is there any way to currently use stakeout? Well, I have tried two things. One is a red card gimmick. So I have a follow me in DD with the red card next to a Thievul. And in DD can go follow me, the opponent attacks into Indeedy, it holds up the red card to switch them out, and then Thievul can attack into that slot and get that stakeout double damage to try to do a ton of damage to an opposing Pokemon. The issues about this are it's super inconsistent. You have to predict right about which of your opponent's Pokemon will go for an attack or whether they'll protect or something. And then you have to target into that slot with Thievul. And of course, it only works once because you only have one red card for that one attack. And then you've still got a Thievul, which will just be weak for the rest of the battle. So that's very, very gimmicky and kind of not a goer. I wouldn't suggest to try to use this unless you really want to get some silly KOs. The second thing I tried was just playing Smogon ZU. ZU is the lowest Smogon tier for singles, and it's actually where Thievul currently sits. What that means is all the good Pokemon are used in the higher tiers, and only the bad Pokemon trickle down to the lower tiers, and you get all the dregs at the bottom in ZU. Now, Thievul is actually kind of okay in this meta, especially with the stakeout ability. And that's because all the much faster Pokemon are kind of tied up in the higher tiers. And there really aren't too many fairies either that Thievul has to worry about. So I've really enjoyed using Thievul in this tier. It can put on a ton of pressure and it plays that revenge role really well. You can break through walls or they switch out and you can take something else out. Really, really cool. So if you do want to use stakeout, if you want to see how good it could potentially be, 
I would suggest checking out Smogon ZU and using Thievil with Stakeout there. If you think there are any more overlooked abilities than Stakeout, please let me know in the comment section because I'm really struggling to think of any. I think this ability is so good and I just can't believe that no one really is talking about it because it could really be quite impressive. If you want to be involved in conversations around this kind of thing in future, follow me on Twitter at SJA900. But that's going to be all for today. Thanks so much for watching. Please consider subscribing if you want to. All that's left to be said is I've been Fu, you've been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.